I've got some stuff in my bag. I've got a review item here too, so we'll check this out. So these are some magnetic reed switches. If you're not familiar with these things, then go have a look. But basically, you use a magnet or some magnetic field, and it will um, energize them. Now, these ones are special because if you look, you see instead of having one wire each side, which is what a traditional reed switch will have, this has got one this side, two this side. This is a normally open, normally closed reed switch. So it's actually like a changeover switch, which is a bit less usual. I'll get some of those, have a look. That way you can use it in either way around. Either normally open or normally closed, depending on which function you actually need. A bit more flexibility. There'll be links for these down below. Alright, next thing. This is a remote control. Well, it's a special kind of remote control. What it's actually for is um, setting region zero on a Sony DVD player, in theory. I've got this on eBay. There won't be a link down below, but you can find ways enough to do a look for them. It sends a uh, like a factory service code to the DVD player, and you can change the zones. But it only works on certain ones. You have to get the right kind of remote. Sometimes you can do it with like a, a normal remote control. You know, the one that comes with it. Sometimes you need a service remote control. And this one also you be using the codes which are from the service remote. You just basically push the button. So I'll send the code to the DVD player, and it will reprogram it. I don't know what it does. I should probably read the instructions or something. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Instructions. There you go. Right. Now the reason I got this is because my DVD player is region 4. Because I've been in New Zealand, right? But I purchased this. Now it turns out, this, I purchased this locally from an online auction site. However, this is actually zone 1. Which will be on the back here somewhere. Oh, it says NTSC, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's from the US. So someone's obviously bought it from Amazon or something, imported in the country, and maybe realised they couldn't watch it because they didn't have a compatible player, or maybe they did watch it and they just passed it on. I don't know. So I need to convert my DVD player to be able to watch Zone 1. What's in here? Get to remote control housing. So this is just the housing. This is for Toyota. The reason we've got this is we've got a, um, a Toyota vehicle, this right now, and the actual housing's cracked on it. It's got a bit crack right through here. So um, I actually want to swap the key housing around, but unfortunately the actual key part is embedded in the housing. I don't think you can get that out. I think it's over molded. So um, I can't just swap that key part around, unfortunately. So I might actually have to get this cut and get the housing swapped over if you worry about it. This is literally a few dollars. It's not really that expensive at all to get. So I thought I'll get one. If we do need it, then look on do it. And this has got the three button pad on a two button remote. I suppose you can always cut the hole out. I suppose it's the idea, isn't it? But there's no, obviously no electronics in this one, but you can buy those separately. Now I did actually buy another key previously with this one here, which has got the wrong, to realize it's a 433 megahertz transmitter. Well, I actually need a 315 megahertz transmitter. So I haven't even used this one here. Don't forget to check the links down below. The thing you see here may not be links depending on what it is. Some things have links, some things don't. But even if you uh, are just in the market for possibly buying something, even if it's not something I'm actually showing you, use the links anyway and go to Banggood or whatever because it helps to um, support the channel because I can then uh, get some extra funding from that. Get commissions on anything you buy from the Banggood. Even if you don't buy the thing I'm showing you, if you just go to the link or well, go via the link to Banggood, I get commission. It's very helpful to me. One relay. Now I'm pretty sure I purchased more than one. Hmm. I'll need to go and check this. No, I did only buy one. That was dumb. I was going to buy a stock. Anyway, I've got one now. So yes, basically it's the read relay. So you've got a coil and relay contacts in there. I don't remember the pin out. I, I don't remember. I have to look into it. But yeah, just basically a read switch, like one of these things, with a uh, built-in coil. So it activates it internally. So it's just a nice one-piece unit. You see these on devices sometimes. So that's why I thought I'd get some. But I seem to have only got one. 
Yeah, I don't know happened. What's in this one? Feed switches. Now these are simple on-off switches, right? So these are normally open, I believe. They close when you put a magnetic field near them. I believe they're normally open. I can't quite see inside there. I think it's normally open. So it could be the other way around. It could, you can get either type. Again, this was stock because I needed some of these to repair a piece of gear. I had to say five one little probably in it I had. I had to replace a reed switch and only one I had was a used one which I pulled out of something I don't know how many years ago. So <laughs> that's what I put in it, but so I've got some brand new ones now. Hopefully contact resistance on these is, is okay because I think you watch out for if replacing these. If it's in a precision piece of gear, then you need to make sure that contact resistance is good. So you should probably test them before you put them in because you never quite know what you're going to get from China. It could be good or bad quality. Don't know. It's a bit of a hit and miss thing. Should I check contact resistance? Nah. Yeah, okay, I've checked contact resistance. Let's have a look. Okay, so you've got my EV blog meter here. Let's just hook up some stuff. Let's stick that there. Check that one there. Is it normally open, normally closed? It is normally open, which is good. Now I need a magnet. Hmm. I've got one here somewhere. Okay, so I've got a magnet. This is actually typically what they'd be used with. So this is if you like home security stuff as well. Your alarms have got sensors on the doors, then you'd be one of these little reed switches in the inside that sensor, and there's a magnet which activates it. And here's a magnet. So I get one point well 0.4 ohms it gets down to, which is about right because I have some levers and see I've nulled it out, so let's have a look to see what the actual levers is. Onto here. I'm getting zero ohms here, so getting 0.4 ohms resistance across that switch, which is not too bad, I suppose. Let's try another one. Point 0.3 ohms, that was a bit better, that one. The How well it switches also depends on the polarity, not the actual angle of the magnet to the switch. So if you turn it around different angles, it might just switch better because it'd be more in line with what it's supposed to be. Um, it can affect them. That's all right. So so far so good. That's point one. That one. They're all pretty low. It's, if you're getting something in the order of of tens of ohms, don't be worried about it. And the strength of the field can also affect them. So these are all looking pretty good. So I think uh, I, I think I'll probably say the whole lot's probably right. I'm going to test them all. So this last thing is a review item for Banggood, and as you can see, if you can tilt your head upside down, it says handheld wireless vacuum cleaner. Well, I think wireless actually I mean cordless, but yeah, I suppose it's close enough. So this will be sent to me for free, at no cost from Banggood, obviously. So thank you very much, Banggood, and check out the links down below if you're interested in anything for my channel at all, which Banggood sell, just follow the links down below. Alright, let's have a look. And what do we have inside? Instructions. Got the nozzles in the top there. Charger thing, which is obviously bounced out from somewhere. Right, let's get this thing out of the box and I'll come back. Where's the remote gone? I've lost it. I can't stop calling. So here we are. This is what comes in the package. So we've got the vacuum itself, brush head here, stiff head and a brush combined which actually slides down, it's quite an interesting design. Also got the typical carpet head, brushes near the, oh yes, so you can, here we go, as little clip comes out, and take the rubber out like that. Charger, let's have a look, 18 volts or half an amp, for my case it's in the incorrect um, plug type but it doesn't matter, I've got a bunch of these death adapter things laying around, plug into that, and it's like a standard 2.1mm DC jack. Also you've got the old extension one thing with the clips on it. So you've got power connection through there and those pins on here. So I'll see it goes straight through the handle. Inside here will be connections. There we go. So you've got a collection chamber. It comes off like that. It's nice and easy. Um, it's got a little filter inside here. Oh. I touched the button. Right. <laughs> That's eating it on. Um, so collection filter. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and give us a thumbs up and subscribe click the bell icon if you're not already subscribed and that sort of stuff you have to click the bell otherwise you won't get notifications about new videos and even if you have subscribed and not click the bell um, you won't get notifications and you won't probably see me unless you happen to be browsing through your subscribe list so make sure you do click the bell icon and uh, give us a thumbs up really important and share the video if you think people are interested